Oh, Felipe. All right, here we go. Um, we are tiling our note today, 7-6. We are on adding and subtracting in scientific notation. Today's date is Monday. It's almost Valentine's Day. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day, so it's the 13th of February, 2023. Let's just know, bigger has two Gs, right? No. It does indeed. It has three. Otherwise, it's Biger. Is it Biger or bigger? I wrote Biger. All right. <laughs> So let's just, I think, dive in with an example. It's the best way to do this. Example number one. Let's do three times 10 to the power of four plus 6.1 times 10 to the power of two. How do we do this? Add the, um, the, the exponents? Ex yeah. I could add the exponents if I'm multiplying the bases. <gasps> oh no. But I'm not multiplying the bases. So what do we do, Melly? What? What do we do? Add? Subtract them? Divide? Multiply? How do we add them? Tell me how to add them. Sorry, Eric. I'll help you in a bit. Try to ask a neighbor for now. Are you finished? Uh, do you want to run to the teacher's lounge and grab all the quizzes? Um, you can leave the quizzes on my desk so that when people finish their practice quiz, then they will put all the notes away, grab the prac or the real quiz from my desk, and then they'll do it. Thank you, Mary. All right. So, yes, we do need to add them, but how? Uh, Is the answer going to be 9.1 times 10 to the something? No. I'm going to convert these first, convert them into standard notation. This is really three with the decimal right here. So the decimal is going to move right or left. What? Well, this number needs to go to zero. It needs to be times 10 to zero. So if this number gets smaller, this number needs to get bigger. Oh, bigger. Right. So I need to go to the right. How many slots? One, two, three, four. So three, one, two, three, four with one, two, three, four zeros. Okay, so this is now times, here, I'll, I'll use it and write it. This is now times 10 to the zero. The whole point of standard notation is to not have any powers here. And I still have the plus sign, plus, and this was 6.1, and then the decimal place is going to move. Well, I need to have this times 10 to the power of zero. So if the two goes to a zero, then the actual number out here is gonna get bigger. If the power got smaller, the number has to get bigger. So getting bigger means to the right. Two spaces. One, two, right? So this is six, one, zero. And again, I'm just writing times 10 to the zero kind of as a, a placeholder. We don't really need the times 10 to the zero. I'm just gonna cross you out. And here's our new problem. You guys don't turn in the practice quiz. That's just to make sure that you know what you're doing. Once you're done with the practice quiz, seventh graders, you are going to put all of your notes away and you are going to take the real quiz. Once you're done with the real quiz, then you're going to turn that one in. Do we, can we use Desmos? No. Yes, you'll need a calculator for the actual quiz. All right, so let me rewrite our problem. We now have 30,000, and we're going to add 610. I feel like you'll, you'll need to use a calculator, yeah. All right. And Evan? 30,610. And now, final step, convert it back to scientific notation. Right now, the decimal place is right there. I need to move it. One, two, three, four, because it needs to have a number out front. So our final answer, we'll give it to Eli. How do you say that? 
30,610 in scientific notation. Yeah, so actually that, that zero right here, you don't write the zero um, because technically there's an infinite number of zeros after that. So we're just gonna not write the zero. Ten to the power of yeah, one, two, three, four. There are four jumps. Times ten to the power of four. One. All right. Let's do a subtraction problem. And call it a day. Um, well, not the entire day, but for the notes. Can I erase this? I could flip it over too if I was being super cool. All right. Example number two. Let's do. I'm gonna give you a, a harder problem now. Let's do um, 2.1 um, times 10 to the... Should I make this like full level maximum difficulty? <clears throat> no, like only medium level? Yeah. Medium, okay. Medium level is gonna be times 10 to the negative two. And now I'm going to be doing subtraction, not addition. Dun, dun, dun. We'll just call this a 3.8 times 10 to the negative 3. No, another negative. I could have made this really hard. What would make this problem super difficult is if this was like a negative 3 and that was a negative 2. That would make this like maximum level of difficulty. Because then I'm doing like the equivalent of like uh, how do you do 0.8 minus 7? And you're like, well, normally you're supposed to do 7 minus 0.8, and then you take the sign of larger. So, again, this could have been harder. Anyway, it's going to be the same procedure as before. Convert to standard notation, and then subtract, and then convert back to scientific notation. So, converting this one to standard notation, let's see if we can get some help from Millie. Is she awake? No? How do you convert this to standard notation? This is going to be something Just times... Just twice to the Twice to the left, twice to the right? Left, because it's subtraction. No, when it's negative. To the left, because you could say that's a negative. So it's going to go 1 to the left, and I'm going to get 0 0.021 times 10 to the power of 0, which we... Again, I'm, I'm just writing this to remind you that's what standard notation is. It means that there is no times 10. So that's 0 0.021. Excellent. And then I'm going to say minus here. Um, I know that Zane's frantically trying to keep up with technology. We'll give him a sec to catch up. And then he will do the next conversion for us. We need to convert 3.8 times 10 to the negative 3 into standard notation. Let me get... And then, uh, we'll wait for Zane. But again, standard notation is the equivalent of saying, I need to have this times 10 to the power of 0. That's standard notation. And then I'll eventually cross that off when I'm done doing this. So. Again, negative 3 is getting bigger to get to 0, which means this number has to get smaller. smaller. How many places in left or right? 3 to the right. If I go to the right, that will get bigger. So 3 to the left. 1, 2, 3. We'll have two zeros out front. So it's going to be 0 0.0038. Oh, you're a zero. Are you done? You can just turn it and then chill. That's it? Okay, so... No, I was talking to Mary. He already finished with his quiz. All right, let me rewrite our problem. We now have, here, I'll, I'll write it. Some, a lot of people write a zero out front of the decimal, so I'm gonna do that as well. Uh, you don't have to, but I, I like to. So I'm gonna say 0 0.021, and I'm going to subtract 0 0.0038. But, but, Mr. Sedell, that's, there's numbers there, not a number there. You're missing a number. Exactly, that one's got it. You can have as many zeros as you want. I could put like a thousand zeros there. And now they all match up. They look good. All right. So, first, you have to make sure you're doing bigger minus smaller. That is the bigger number, and we are subtracting the smaller number. Sometimes you'll be doing a smaller number minus a bigger number, in which case, switch that so you're doing bigger minus smaller and we're always taking the sign of the larger. The larger here happened to be positive. The smaller here happened to be negative. 
So you're taking the sine of the larger. That will affect us for the hardest type of problem. All right, for this one, zero minus eight. Ah, oh, can't do it. Yeah. Gotta borrow. So turning you into a 10, borrowing from you, the one turns into a zero. Okay, now I can do 10 minus eight. I'm like, oh yeah, that's two. Ah, oh, zero minus three, Eli, I can't do that. So what am I gonna do? I can't do zero minus three. You gotta borrow. I gotta borrow. This two turns into a one. A one, and now the zero turns into a ten. Ten. Now you can do the subtraction problem. Ten minus three, seven. Easy peasy. Eli, last step. You make it a one. It is a one, and then the one is gonna be subtracting a zero, which is one. One. What about zero minus zero? Zero minus zero is zero. What about zero minus zero? Zero minus zero is zero. Yeah, and then when with all addition subtraction problems, you need to keep the decimal in line, which we did. Look at our answer, which is not our final answer because it's not in scientific notation. So again, your very last step, convert to scientific notation. This is the same thing as we'll give it to oh, um, Evan. Dog. What? Wait, Evan did her last conversion to scientific notation. Oh. Let's give it to Melly. Melly, convert this to scientific notation. Times 10, 4 or something? What? Incorrect. Wait, what? Wait, no. So hold on. The decimal place is right there. We're going to move it how many spots? Four. Four? One, two, three, four? No. Yeah, Scientific no. notation, we don't want one number. What? You went too far. Two. Oh, oh, yeah, that's true. Um, one, two. Okay, so tell me my final answer. Tell me what to write here. Times 10 to the power of 2? Yeah. Times 4 to the power of 3? So, uh, you're missing numbers here. Oh, you know what? Can you do it? I thought you were good at math. You know what? That's when Leah's here. So you um, her. So the decimal place is here. 1.72 times 10 to the power of 2. Okay. Oh, wow. We have enough time. You want me to do like the fully ultimate hard problem? Uh -uh. No, no? Thank you. you don't want that in your notes? You just want to figure it out on your own? When yeah, it's... I got this. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mel, you're good with that? You want me to give you a really, really hard example in your notes, or you want to just figure it out when you... She says, no! she says she wants to do it. I think it's important to go through because. Uh, you can flip over to the back side. So you draw on the back side of the piece of paper. Or you can, if you want to try to squeeze it, you're going to squeeze it right in there. Zane, you have infinite paper. You have. Like, you could do a thousand pieces of paper per problem. Oh. Like, it doesn't cost me anything. I'm Alright, example three. Let's do... Um, I'm making up numbers at this point. Choose lowish numbers. Lowish numbers, um, 1.17 times 10 to some negative power because you guys are scared of negatives. Negative Do you want to do negative 15? Absolutely not. Totally I, I, I won't do that. Billion. Um, I will make this tricky. Oh, wow. I did that to you guys? What? I did it. All right. I'm going to do it to you as well. I'm going to do negative 14. No. I'm just looking at the homework, and that means that problem is going to show up on the quiz. So I need to show you it right now. Minus. Any any number is shot out of number? Three. Point. No, seven. Seven times ten to the power of. Okay, so I want this number to be smaller and this number to be bigger. So this number needs to be. Let's go to like negative twelve. Negative twelve is slightly bigger than negative fourteen. All right. This is like the penultimate question. If you can answer this on a quiz, you got brain muscles. Flex on this. All right. So, um, for what it's worth, I'm going to be giving you problems that are like times 10 to the power of 20, 30, 70. Like you're not going to be able to write that number of zeros. So there's gonna there's gonna need to be some shortcut, right? So how are we gonna do this problem then? We don't have to fully expand this into standard notation. There's a, a quicker shortcut. What if I get these two to be the same number? Because remember when we had standard notation, we were doing something like times 10 to the power of zero, times 10 to the power of zero, and then I have a number and a number and I could just subtract them? 
because these had the same power. If I get these to be the same power, then I can just subtract them and call it good. So is there a way that I could get one of these to the same power? Let's choose like, let's go to negative 10. Let's go to negative 14. Let's go to negative 12. What power should we go to? Borrow from negative 14 and put it one on there. Borrow from negative 14. So what do you want to convert this to? It's going to be times 10 to the power of? 10 to the power of 13. You want to go negative 13? Yes. Okay. What do you want to convert this one to? 10 to the power of negative 13. Okay. I mean, it's valid. It doesn't matter what you choose for your power. Just make them both the same power. If they're both the same power, then you're allowed to subtract. Just like you're allowed to subtract because these were both the same power. All right. So to get from negative 14 to negative 13, are you getting... Bigger or are you getting smaller? You're actually getting bigger because you're adding one, right? If you add one to get from negative 14, that goes to negative 13. So it is getting bigger. So if this is getting bigger, this number here gets smaller. Smaller. So it moved the decimal to the left. That gets it smaller, so it's going to move right there. This is going to be 0.117. All right. Great first step. Mm, all right. Now, to get from negative 12 to negative 13, our power got smaller. It got smaller because I had to subtract one. So if this number got smaller, this number had to get bigger. This number is really... 37. Yeah, thir there's a minus sign and then 37, exactly. We got one bigger, one smaller, and there's our new problem. I'm going to ignore these for a sec. We'll, we'll come back to them. Our new problem is this, 0.117 minus, I guess I have to do, minus 37, 0.000. I always want to do bigger minus smaller. Right now I have smaller minus bigger, so I'm just going to, I mean, I'm going to keep the sign larger. You always keep the sign larger. The larger in this case was a negative, so I know my answer is going to be negative. Are we okay with that logic? I got con confused spaces from you guys. I'm doing... A number that's really small minus a big number, the answer has to be negative. You keep the sign in the larger every time you do an addition or subtraction problem. The larger is the negative, I'm calling this a negative instead of a subtraction, a negative 37. So I'm going to keep the sign of that. My answer is going to be negative. I'm going to throw this out the window and just be like, just do big minus small. Always do big minus small. You can even write this off to the side. Always, always do big minus small. With the, with the caveat, with the uh, exception, or not exception, with the remembering that you always take sign of larger. Always take the sign of the larger. All right. So, let's do it. Bigger minus smaller. I'm doing 37 with the decimal place right there, minus decimal place goes right here, 0 0.117, 0 0.117. There's my new problem. That one wasn't gonna work so well. Notice I lined up my decimal. You will need to line up your decimal at all times when you add and subtract scientific notation decimal numbers for the rest of your life. I'm missing numbers over there, and I'm missing numbers there. Just Fill them with zeros. Evan knows what to do. I can put zeros there. I can put zeros there. Okay, now I can do this problem. <laughs> kind of. I, again, you guys have probably borrowed from zeros many, many times before. I can't do zero minus seven. Got to borrow. Oh, but I can't borrow because there's nothing there. So I'm going to borrow. I can't borrow because there's nothing there. So you got to go all the way over here. We're borrowing from a seven, and this is the order that you do it. Seven turns into a six. We borrowed from you. This turns the zero next to the seven into a 10. But now that that's a 10, we are going to borrow from the 10, turn that into a nine, and turn this one into a 10. But we need to borrow for the very last digit, so that 10 turns into a nine, and this last, last right digit is a 10. So now our problem is three, six, nine, nine, 10, minus zero, zero, one, one, seven. All right, Melly, catch us up. Decimal place, six and three. Yeah. Excellent. There it is. All right, Eli. Mm. Is that the final answer? No. 
Oh, no, there's shit. two problems with it. Give me one of them. What um, do we need to do? You gotta make a scientific notation. Good, that's one of the first problems. What Someone else it? tell me one of the second problems. Oh, what do you mean? It has to be negative because we did a small positive minus a big net or minus a bigger number. So I'm taking this sign of a negative. So we'll make it negative right now. And as Eli said, and we'll also make it in scientific notation. Yeah, for us, Eli, go for it. Um, so, so negative 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 Negatives and positives are all fine in scientific notation. Oh, okay, so so that means you gotta get the negative three point six eight eight three, and that is times. I think okay. it's negative one. It would have been negative one, but what? we started at thirteen. Negative thirteen. Yeah. So what is it really? Positive. So we start. If we start. At negative 13, and we need to go another, we need to do another <coughs> negative 1. Negative 13. All right, this answer is 100% correct. However, as a typical rule of thumb, after the decimal place in AP calculus and basically all of your math classes, you usually round to three decimal places. So I have one, two, three. I need to round after that. That eight should be converted into a... It stays the same. Yeah, it's still an eight because that number was a three. So you're right, and I would give you full points on that quiz. But if you know how to round correctly, my classes can be negative 3.688 times 10 to the negative 14. And that is truly an epic problem that you might encounter on a quiz or a test. Whew. All right. So... Give me your fist of five. Adding and again, subtracting is a difficult one. Adding, subtracting, scientific notation, even after doing example three. How are we feeling? I see the four. A four. A four and a half. And a three. And a half. 